you read the title, hopefully. That would be kind of weird if you just clicked on the video without reading what the title was, but <laughs> we're going to um, start going through Colossians now. I've been trying to pray about it and reading over different books, and it seems like that's a, appropriate. And one of the things in my head that's like the transition in James is uh, it's like a discourse on proper behavior, like treatment of people. A little bit of, uh, you know, proper perspective on our relationship with the Lord. But Colossians is definitely, it's like the other way around, in a way. It's like a discourse on our perspective and treatment of our relationship toward Christ, specifically. And how that should affect, the end of Colossians is how that should affect our relationships with people. And this morning... Uh, Part of in my devotions again, it was that that exact idea, <laughs> which is funny. It's entitled "The Oldest Christian Confession," and I reference text is uh, Philippians two. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And he goes through talking about the the historical um, creed of Christendom and the confession that Jesus is Lord. And then he says, of course, as we'd all expect, um, he references that confession being in the New Testament in back in the first century. And Peter is a is a immediate you know reference. And so he says that. Uh, the name for God, Yahweh, that we all are familiar with, is was translated from the Old Testament into all the texts as kurios, 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 which is the word for Lord. So anytime you see that word kurios in kurios, however you want to say it, anytime you see that word in texts, it is an immediate reminder of and specifically when it's used of Jesus, it is a reference to Yahweh. Not just Lord as, you know, the master of a house, a Lord, um, like how people referred to, to, to guys when they were, you know, my Lord, you know, what can I do? How can I help you? How can I serve you? Um, it's directly related to and is and holds the connotation of the Godhead and, of course, Jesus being the fullness of the Godhead. And then he ends by saying, Jesus is Lord then is no trite statement, but it is not a terrifying one either. For this Lord is kind and good, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, which is a reference to uh, Exodus. His love means that before he sat on his heavenly throne, he hung on a wooden cross. Since he is Lord, he can always ask for your all. And since he loves you, you can give it joyfully. So what will you confess today? You know, who do you say that I am? And in Colossians, Paul makes this, he has a prayer about understanding the identity of Christ, and then addresses specifically two uh, false doctrines that were prevalent, being mysticism and legalism, to over-spiritualize and to misconstrue uh, our <clears throat> connection to the spiritual realm and therefore who we are, what we are in subjection under. And there's a bunch of whole different stuff that we'll get into uh, as we go through the, through the book, it was sort of two sides of a, of a coin. It was mysticism was a liberating and a very uh, sort of free thinking kind of way of looking at things, sort of a polytheism that Jesus was just another one of of the god, the many gods in many different religions, this sort of uh, spiritual free for all. And legalism was just the opposite: people being subject to laws that 
won them salvation, which is unbiblical, and that's not who Jesus was. That's not what he represented, of course. And both of those things, the love of God and the liberty that we have in him, in our relationship to him, and not being uh, not being pious or hypocritical in our religiosity, but still maintaining a right relationship and a right uh, lifestyle means that, and he addresses it in specific situations uh, with certain relationships in the end of Colossians with the family and, and work and everything. But it's like a whole cleaning house, if you will, of our interpretation of our relationship with Christ and how that has implications on our relationship with other people. And I just think it's appropriate. Like, of course it is. It's from Scripture, so why not? But it just, uh, it seems to fit well with James. So from what we've been looking at so far, it's it's quite practical and very needful in, in this day and age where so much... Uh, false doctrine, misconceptions, deception, and people just not knowing their their Bible, not knowing the Word of God, not knowing Jesus very well. And <clears throat> it's unfortunate, and it is, uh, it should be a sobering thing for us to remember that our lives, if we are believers, should be a reflection of a right relationship and right outworking of that relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father and our Savior. So, of course, the prayer is that through this study and as we continue to search out God's Word, that He will reveal to us the things, the areas where we don't fully confess him as Lord, where we don't fully acknowledge him for the balanced and perfect uh, compilation that he is in all of his attributes, his love and his lordship, his <clears throat> grace and his justice, all things considered, and that as we see the day approaching, we would be able to be presented blameless before him at his coming. So yeah, Colossians. I'm excited. It's been a blessing for me to go through James the way that I have, and I know that there's more to be, you know, there's more to be uh, found, if you will, uh, more to be understood, as we've talked about before, every time we read scripture. So it's not like, yeah, we went through James, so that's it, you know. And I'm sure there will be <laughs> cross-referencing from Colossians to James anyway. But as we've been talking about recently, God, the Word, Jesus, it, everything goes back to Him. And everything has to be rightly reflective of and rightly uh, responsive to His identity. Who do you say that I am? Is He a liar? Was he a lunatic, or is he truly Lord? And all the answers are in Scripture. <laughs> the Word of God that shall never pass away, by no means. But anyway, we're back with a song next week, and then I'll see you guys, uh, yeah, that here, there, in the air. Grace and peace.